G'day folks, I just thought I'd give you a bit of a look at the uh, oscilloscope that I picked up from the uh, rubbish dump a while ago, probably about three months ago, four months ago. Uh, it's a Trio CS1556, it's pretty old, I think it's five or ten megahertz at the most, two channel. Uh, I need to get some proper probes that fit onto these old fashioned banana plugs. Uh, probably not too hard. I'm going to try and just strip some coax back as uh, Sparky Project suggested. He's done it in the past and just insert one end in here and then shield or shielding it obviously go to the outside of the plug or the ground. Um, yeah, it's a pretty uh, decent little unit. It's very old though. I don't know how reliable it's going to be for picking up ripple on power supplies. I do notice that the um, dot or line goes diagonally. It's not square with respect to the grid on the uh, screen. It didn't do that last time I powered it on, so I'm wondering if something's going wrong. Maybe one of the grids is losing voltage and the electron beam's being deflected the wrong way. It's illumination for the uh, grid. It's just, it's got some lamps behind it. Intensity, I can turn down a bit. Focus again. It all still works. Uh, trigger level control. Position. I don't know a lot about scopes. I'm a complete novice essentially. I'm just going to be going off what I can find online and what other people can tell me. The main thing I want to do is check for ripple on that um, plasma TV power supply. Anyway, not bad for a rubbish dump find. I'll uh, take the cover off and we can have a look inside. I've never taken the cover off this. Uh, I've been wait waiting to the time I actually do a video because this thing was dripping wet when I found it so I just basically let it sit and dry out for about two months and powered it on about a month ago and it all did what it's done now and uh, actually I did connect a function generator from the outside of the socket to the inside I've connected a uh, sine wave and square wave function generator and I was able to display that clearly on the display so yeah it, it does work it does read and receive and display signals oh, look at that simple basically two board build all mechanical switches Standard magnetic core transformer for uh, or iron core transformer for my power supply. Different voltages. Uh, it's two, or well, probably multi voltage input. Uh, no, no, this is selector 22240, or you take the tab off, you'd probably be able to select over to 110. But that's all outputs to the main chassis. Very simple old caps but good caps got rubicons and um, yeah I've put plenty of those across the ESR meter particularly those Elners there and they've come up better than some of the new caps that I put in things uh, yeah <coughs> some of those classic electrolytics some of them die a horrible death really early on some of them die later on some of them just keep on going because they're obviously way overrated for what they're doing but again, it's something I could probably check. It might explain that droop in the uh, the display line because the CRT is not loose in its socket. I mean, it's on a rubber mount, but it certainly hasn't shifted since it's been well just sitting there on the shelf. The only thing it's been subjected to is vibration from the amplifier base, base from the speakers. So between the first time I powered it up and the second time, it's just started drooping that line. But again, very, very simple. All through hole, a little bodge cap there. The sun glare, it's a nice 30, 34 degree day, although the wind seems to have come up a bit early. High voltage danger. I always like it when they do that. Danger, high voltage. Do not touch. NEC, Nippon Electric Company. <laughs> Needs a good clean, that's about it. 
No EHT lead going to the outer glass either. It's all going straight to the, straight to the guns. It's a plate type CRT. There's no uh, no deflection yoke under there. That's just a shield. Um, that looks like a multi cap, and there's a standard electrolytic 47 microfarad whatever volt. Yeah. Yeah, that big can there could yeah, could be a high voltage drive for the CRT. It will still need some kind of EHT, but yeah, it's quite possible that's that's the EHT as well. It could be oil filled. Dust. That's about it. Little axial cap there. Is that one microfarad 250 volt? That's on the calibration. Yeah, lovely. bit loose. I'm going to take that front panel off and tighten the nut. Stop it from wiggling around like that. And the centre knob controls the potentiometer on the back. And switch of course, it's got a rotary switch on the back of it. Very nice. It needs a little bit of love and care but that's about it. The thing just wants to work. Now to uh, give it more than just a uh, function generator signal, a thousand picofarad, plus or minus one percent, 500 volts DC. <laughs> it's an old school. Uh, what would that be? A mica cap? It might be mica cap. The yellow one on the back there is polyfilm, polyester, or polyethylene, something like that. Could be polyethylene. Anyway, that is a brief look through a old scope. I don't know what vintage it is, I'm guessing 70s, late 70s, maybe early 80s. Uh, it doesn't appear to be any ICs in here. There don't appear to be any ICs in here. I don't know what's under those cans there, but apart from that, I'm not seeing a single microchip. It's all transistors. So yeah, 70s era. Even 1980s scopes seem to have a few ICs in them. This one just doesn't have any, unless there's a couple hidden under those two metal cans right in there. But yeah, I don't know. I do like that sticker though. A little classic NEC stuff. NEC made awesome CRT televisions. I actually have an NEC Plasma Sync Plasma, and that thing is just loaded with features for its age. It's basically a broadcast monitor. It's got BNC high definition connectors on it. You don't see them anymore. No, NEC know how to do it. Anyway, that's all for now and thanks for watching. That's a fascinating bit of equipment. I'm glad I saved this. Z-axis input. <laughs>